Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Julian Williamson, and I am the Deputy Chief of Administration. It is truly an honor to serve as the Master of Ceremonies for tonight's graduation. Please rise for the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Thank you, and you may take your seats. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce Minister Mary Watson, who will lead the invocation. Bless the Lord. One nation under God, truly, that says Hampton Rose area. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we thank you and praise you and magnify your holy name, giving your name all the honor and all the glory for such a time as this to unite us all on one accord to recognize those that are declared to be servants, God. Father God, we thank you for this ceremony that's about to take place. Bless everyone that's trying to get here. Bless those that are here. And God, continue to bless each individual who has decided to make servitude or uh, honor. We ask you to bless this ceremony and all that's within it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and everyone said amen. We have a number of dignitaries in the audience that I would like to recognize at this time. Um, Councilman Christopher Woodard. <laughs> Vice Mayor DeAndre Barnes. I would also uh, like to thank those representatives that have come out to help us with this celebration from neighboring departments as well. At this time, I would like to introduce our fire chief, Mr. Fire Chief Nestor Mangibak, for his opening remarks. Thank you. I know you're looking at your program and you're uh, seeing Miss Angel Jones uh, on the list. She is on her way. Uh, we wanted to go ahead and move forward with the program. Oh, there she is. So guess what we're going to do? I'm going to step back. I'm going to introduce our Madam City Manager, Angel Jones. <laughs> Whew, let me catch my breath. I feel like I was running for a fire. Uh, Anywho, my apologies. I had a meeting in Chesapeake, and unfortunately, I wasn't aware of the bridge and all that stuff, but here I am. So good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining us for this special occasion. The graduation of the ceremony, graduation ceremony of the Hampton Roads Fire Academy class of 34. To the graduates, outstanding 
accomplishment. That's Your tenacity, discipline, and heart for service has seen you through. A rigorous course of study and physical conditioning. To everyone who supported each of these graduates, whether it's encouragement, instruction, food, kicking them out of the door, whatever that looks like, could you please stand? I know it's some supporters in this room, instructors, family members. You deserve an applause. Absolutely, because they could have not done it on their own. They needed support. To the graduates, you have been educated and trained by the finest. Your knowledge, tactics, communication skills will serve you throughout your career. As you are handed your certificates, be proud of your accomplishments. Know that you have a team of people ready to help you succeed. Now, as I wrap up, I learned a few things. I was told when you give a speech, stand up, speak up, shut up, and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to adhere to that. <laughs> so with that, I want to say that you've taken on something that a lot of people do not do. You've elected a profession where you put your lives on the line every day. You are servants of this city. Stand proudly and know that we are behind you every step of the way. We want you to succeed. We're here to help you succeed, whatever your goals are. We're here to help you accomplish them. So just know when you get that certificate, that's the next step in fulfilling your lifelong goals. So we stand ready. And again, I say congratulations. Thank you. Nothing like uh, being fluid and making adjustments twice today, right? So, uh, but really, I, uh, the, the first thing I want to do is uh, just offer my uh, thanks to uh, one city manager. Uh, you know, this class started with our opening recruitment in March of 2020, and everyone knows what happens or what happened in March 2020. You know, basically the entire world shut down. So uh, the process was shut down until July 1st of 2020. And luckily, we have graduates here from a fire academy that started December 1st of 2020, and within 10 months, we're graduating this class. So that's really a tribute to the Human Resources Department, the Police Department for helping us with polygraphs. The entire training staff is led by Deputy Chief Julian Williamson, so I'd like to give them a round of applause. So we definitely couldn't do it without our support from city council, and uh, they definitely support city administration, and they know the public safety is priority in the city of Portsmouth, and uh, we're there as a team to make sure that that happens no matter um, what comes before us. Um, we're still on the tailwind of this pandemic. Um, most people don't know you're graduated. We just hired uh, 10 new firefighter recruits on Monday. So we are rolling academies back to back just to make sure that we don't have those gaps there um, in service. So um, it's definitely a, uh, a tribute to all the support that we have within the support system. Ms. Jones mentioned uh, families that support the firefighter recruits, and I tell you, that grueling 10 months is just a small blink of what an entire career will, will need support from. So the family support is going to be a constant, and uh, that, in turn, is, is something that 
as firefighters and EMS providers and dispatchers, we have to make sure that one, we take care of ourselves, but two, know that our, our family is truly important to us uh, for any success that we may have. So I dropped all my cards, so I'm just going with it. <laughs> so, so what I look at and what I want to share with the class, and I told them uh, in the conference room earlier today, I was going to be very brief, and it was truly about them. And I want to get out in, in front of you all um, as soon as possible. But one thing that is always a challenge in the fire service is health and wellness of our firefighters and our EMS providers. That's from the emotional standpoint, the physical standpoint, and just all of the environmental stressors that are out there. You know, um, cancer is, is, is a big one, uh, PTSD, all of it is there. And it, it is truly an honor to most people that don't know the training that you all have gone through to know that you're going to live a life where you're going to be at constant battle of that entire environment. And what I like to share, and I always share with the folks that are close to me, is you have to be truly strong mentally. You have to have that mental fortitude. You have to be good to yourself, not only by eating good meals, but you have to look at your exercise as a primary need for you to survive. Sleep deprivation, you're not going to be able to get away from it. 24-hour shifts, we have a busy city. We have a city that needs help around the clock. So my challenge to you is to look at yourself, understand that you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else. And that has to be constant. You're going to have to continue to remind yourself every day. Um, I, I still do it. Um, you know, just because I'm in administration doesn't mean that there isn't uh, battles that, you know, I have to fight or I don't have to fight anymore. But, you know, it's, it's something that we all are challenged with as individuals. So with that, you have a strong support system. There are internal support systems for you. We have a team, a great brotherhood and sisterhood of firefighters, paramedics, and dispatchers that are a continuous system of, of help. So you should never think that you're going to ever be alone or you have that sense of being alone because it's not there. There is a support system. Externally, we have a lot of help. There is our um, local Union 539. They have a mission that's the same as ours. It is take care of ourselves, take care of the people, and really look out for the best services that we can provide. So I'd be remiss not to, to mention the uh, IFF 539 as an integral part of this department because they are. They're highly influential and they're on the same side as us. So just wanted you to know that. So with that, congratulations. Good luck to you. I know I'll see you out there on the floor and I know you're gonna make the citizens proud. So thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize a few more dignitaries that are in attendance with us. Deputy City Manager Mimi Terry, our, our police chief. Our police chief, Ronaldo Prince. Okay. At this time, uh, we will show you a little video, a little caption of what uh, these men and women have been through for the past 10 months. So, uh, Mr. McIntosh. Like a tidal wave. I don't know how 
gotta play it safe. I like walking on a razor blade. I keep burning like a wild, burning like a wild blaze. Baby, here I go. I'm out of control. You can't stop me, no. Them say I'll lose again, and I'll keep coming like a hurricane, coming like a hurricane. Cause I know I'm gonna prove if I keep coming, I cannot lose. And I'm rolling like the thunder, pouring like the hardest rain. Baby, here I go. I'm out of control. You can't stop me, no. Lay down, never walk away. I keep pushing like a tidal, pushing like a tidal wave. I don't know how to 
play it safe. I like walking on a razor blade. I keep burning like a wild, burning like a wild blaze. Baby, here I go. I'm out of control. You can't stop me, no. Them say I'll lose again, and I'll keep coming like a hurricane, coming like a hurricane. Cause I know I'm gonna prove if I keep coming, I cannot lose. At this time, I would like to welcome the Academy Coordinator, uh, Mr. Nate Folden, along with Fire Chief Nestor Mangubak, Deputy Chief Justin Arnold, to the podium for the presentation of awards and certificates. Everybody hear me okay? Good. I'd like to welcome everybody once again uh, to this Recruit Academy graduation. Uh, my name is Nathan Folden. I am the interim uh, co-coordinator, if you will, for this class. Um, I would like to take a moment to recognize uh, Amber Nelson, who preceded me in this role. She uh, has since moved on to further her career goals, and that's how I became the current coordinator of the class. So, Aaron, if you wouldn't mind standing to be recognized, everybody give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize the rest of the training and staff and instructors seated over here. If y'all would stand and catch a round of applause, please. Thank you. Truly, the coordinator's job is challenging enough um, without good staffing working with you, alongside you, behind the scenes, in front of everybody. I mean, it, it would not be possible. So thank you all very much sincerely for your time, for your dedication, all the after hours. Everything you've done, I appreciate it sincerely, and I know the recruits do as well, so thank you. So my job tonight is to present awards and certificates for the class. Um, I'll go over briefly what those entail. Uh, each recruit, graduating recruit, gets a certificate from the Hampton for the completion of the Hampton Roads Fire Academy. Uh, Portsmouth is a participating body in the Hampton Roads uh, Fire Academy system and is sanctioned by the Hampton Roads Fire Chief. So under that certification for your HRFA graduation, uh, I'd like y'all to realize that that encompasses nine, maybe 10 classes, uh, you know, check me on my counting, but that's a lot of stuff. And that's not counting your national registry EMT certification. You guys have put in a lot of time, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and you should be proud of yourself for what you've achieved. Okay. So recognize, be proud of yourself, enjoy this moment, realize what that represents for you and what that represents for you going forward as well. Okay. You're building a great resume from the jump. So. Uh, we're going to, that covers the HRFA certifications. We'll get to those here in a minute. I want to give out four Fire Academy specific awards. Um, those four categ categories, excuse me, are for the valedictorian. Everybody knows he has the uh, highest average GPA through fire school. Uh, we're going to award an, a, um, a physical fitness champion. So we use, uh, our Fire Academy uses the Army physical fitness standard exam uh, to gauge and to track progress in our recruits and their physical fitness. Um, endeavors so that said they're gauged in push-ups sit-ups and a two-mile run two minutes of sit-ups two minutes of push-ups and a two-mile run and we've all come to enjoy that so so much right 
So the physical fitness award goes to the recruit um, with the highest average PT score as by, you know, determined by those standards. We're going to award a most improved certificate. That certificate goes to the recruit that has demonstrated the biggest overall change from coming into the fire academy and the first physical fitness uh, training exam to their last. So the one that has made the biggest games. And uh, quite frankly, that is often the hardest battle um, to, to, to win. So it's within. You've got to motivate. You've been very motivated. You've got to cross some very big hurdles. Uh, so that's a significant achievement in and of itself. Uh, we're also going to give out a certificate uh, that we deem the Ben Franklin Award. Uh, that just recognizes the fire recruit who is de devoted to training, who uh, demonstrates a spirit of service, as well as dedication to duty and professionalism within the fire service. The Ben Franklin Award is the only award that uh, we as the Academy staff come together, put our ideas in a pot, and more or less take a vote on who we feel is the most deserving of this award. So. Uh, everything else is done on the student's own merit. The Ben Franklin Award is the only one that we come together again as a staff to, to present. So um, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and move forward with those awards uh, for valedictorian. Any guesses? Melissa Scatta. <laughs> Congratulations, very well done. Next up is the Physical Fitness Award. The, again, the highest average uh, through the class is going to go to Alyssa Babcock. For the most improved, and I can tell you, this recruit just about jumped out of their skin when they finally passed their final oh, assessment. Recruit Schutz, Jonathan Schutz. Ben Franklin Award winner again. This is for general professionalism, dedication, and hard work. Uh, the Academy staff decided this rec this recruit is most deserving. That's going to be Ryan Lewis. This time where the recruits are going to position themselves to receive their HRFA certifications. Just a quick note for all of you, the training staff came together and are gifting each one of you graduating a challenge coin with the Portsmouth logo and with a few dedication reminders on the back. So each one of you gets this as you come forward to get your HRFA certificate. Okay. First up, Class VP, BFT Award winner, Alyssa Babcock. <laughs> Alyssa is going to be reporting to Engine 10 B shift for her assignment. Yeah. All right, next up, Gregory Farber. 
Barbara was our scribe for class 34. Barber is going to go to into two C shift. <laughs> All right. Next up, fire medic Charles George. Mr. George is going to be going to engine three A shift for his assignment. Oh man, Dallas Joyner. <laughs> Dallas is going to be going to engine one A shift. Ryan Lewis. Ryan, you'll be going to engine seven, B shift. Engine seven, B. All right. Class president, Daniel McCain. <laughs> Daniel, you're going to be going to engine nine, C shift. Zachary Norman. <laughs> Zach's going to be going to engine seven on the A shift. Thank you. I'm going to forget. Yeah, absolutely. Willard Robbins. Robbins, you're going to be going to engine three B shift. Congratulations. <laughs> Larry Scott. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah! Larry Scott is also our validatorium. <laughs> Melissa, you're going to be going to engine three C shift. Congratulations. <laughs> Most improved, Jonathan Schutz. Shots, you're going to be going to engine two, A shift. Thank you. Mr. Sebo, last but not least. You're going to be going to engine one, C shift, my friend. Engine one, C shift. Well done. Congratulations again from all of us with the training staff. You've worked very hard. Be proud of yourselves. Enjoy it. All right. Congratulations. Sure. All right. At this time, I'll ask for the class president to come forward for his speech. Mr. Daniel McCann. Oh, thank you. Uh, good evening, family and friends of her for the class 34. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you for your continued support throughout this uh, process. I don't think we'd be able to make it this whole 10 months. It's been a long one. Um, Without you all, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, a big thank you to the training staff. Without you guys, it would have been a time. From the early morning PT, to the stressful evolutions, to the surprise uniform inspections, you shared with us many ways how attention to detail will save lives. Lessons learned throughout the, this academy have been priceless. We don't know how but you managed to take a group of individuals and turn us into the team we are today. There have been many ups, downs, and everything in between. 
We've watched your resiliency and ability to lead through situations that weren't always ideal, always setting the example of what a true leader and a firefighter should be. Be the firefighter you want rescuing you. With that, Class 34, we have our work cut out for us, but always remember to work the problem, fix it. It's not that hard. Get out of your own head. The training doesn't stop here. Stay hungry, big dogs. At this time, I'd like to ask Captain Sean Tiart and Lieutenant Majetic to come to the podium. Good evening, everyone. Madam City Manager, Vice Mayor, Council Members, and all the dignitaries here today, recruits and their families and friends. I'm honored to stand here before you today for your commencement from one of the best fire rec recruit academies in the state. Now notice I didn't say perfect, I said best. And I said best for a reason. And the reason I said one of the best is based upon the fact that in essence, you are the fire recruit academy. And if you had not given your very best, you wouldn't be standing here today, fully prepared to join the ranks of the many brave men and women who serve the citizens of this great city every single day. And as this long journey comes to an end and you embark upon a new journey, I want you to remember these words. When you arrive to your new duty station, and are tasked with various duties like cleaning and inspecting your fire truck and equipment, maintaining in a state of readiness at all times, and other assigned duties. Give it your best. When your team or district is conducting training evolutions and assigned tasks and drills, give it your best. When you're responding to fire calls, medical emergencies, and other major incidents, for that matter, where a citizen has called 911 because they're experiencing the worst day of their life. Remember, always give it your best. And in doing so, regardless of the outcome, you will have peace in knowing that you gave it your best. You earned it. Big Dogs 34, congratulations to each and every one of you. I'll pass it on. Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to say congratulations to all of you. So, uh, I saw all you start 10 months ago and uh, all the hard work you put in. And everything that uh, the chief has said, captain has said, uh, instructor Folden, about taking care of yourselves, it is absolutely crucial. Um, you know, and there's one more piece to it, and it's being kind to yourselves. And that is taking care of yourself and each other, because it's going to be tough. There's going to be nights you don't go to sleep and you're wore out. And if you don't take care of yourself, and you get old like me, it starts to wear on you. <laughs> so it's very important that you do that. And you know, none of you made it through this alone. You all supported each other. And it doesn't change for the rest of your career. So I wish you all the best of luck. And congratulations. Class 34, post for the presentation of the badges.
At this time, I'd like to invite all badge pinners to the front. Class 34, please present your badge. Badge pinners, you may now pin the badge. Badge pinners, would you please return to your seats? It is my pleasure to invite Ms. Deborah White, Portsmouth City Clerk, to administer the oath of office. Sometimes everybody needs a little direction. <laughs> Recruits, if you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I and your name I do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties and coming upon me as firefighter of the city of Portsmouth according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations to each of you. And I say this proudly, firefighters, you may return to your seats. At this time, I would like to welcome back to the podium Minister Mary Watson for the benediction. Well, you can clap for the Lord. You ain't got to clap for me. Give God some glory. I don't know who this belonged to. <laughs> 
It is such a blessing to be before all of you all. Some of y'all look like little babies. Just so young up there, you look so beautiful. Thank God for all of y'all. Now, I made it quick when I first opened up, but I do want to bless you with what God has given me to give unto you. Is that all right? Because right now, this is where you chose to be. This is the place that you decided to give your service. But even though you chose it, God placed you. So I want to give you this prayer that God has given unto me. Bless you, Lord, our God of mercy who through your son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great commandment of love for one another. Send down your blessing on these young servants who so graciously devoted and dividing the, themselves to helping others. Grant them courage when they are afraid, wisdom when they must make quick decisions, strength when they are weary and compassion in all their work. When the alarm sounds and they are called to aid both friends and strangers, let them faithfully serve you in their neighborhood, in this city. We ask this through Christ our Lord, Jesus Christ our Savior. Father God, we thank you and praise you and magnify your holy name for giving us this opportunity, God, to come together to be the foundation and the strength for those that have decided to put their lives first. Those that have decided to go, God, and be servants for those that are less fortunate and need than we are. So, God, we thank you for each and every one. God, thank you for all that you have done, all that you're about to do. Continue to bless, deliver, and set free. Commit God your spirit over them in Jesus name and the people of God said amen be blessed and be grateful I would like to uh, express my gratitude to the training staff uh, city leaders, uh, our department members, and everyone that came together to make this graduation possible and supported uh, these recruits who are now firefighters through their endeavors. Um, please join us for light refreshments after the ceremony. Thank you and have a good night.